Hey folks. So I was just scrolling through Twitter the other day, minding my own business, when out of nowhere I get hit with this. And I don't know if I should take it personally or not, but I do know that I was talking with Ant from Superbase a few days before he posted this, <laughs> telling him about a project I was using that wasn't using auth. I don't know if this was on his mind, if I was if I was who he was thinking of or not. That's fine. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to make a video real quick talking about what would what might cause someone to roll their own auth and just talk about whether those reasons would be valid or not. I'll start with myself. I have a side project uh, that I've just been messing around with for the last year or so, uh, playing around with some real time uh, top few kind of RPG game, essentially like an MMO in the browser. So I rolled my own auth for this and I, I'm not exactly proud of it, but there's a couple good things that came out of it. We wanna talk about my motivations. My motivations here were really uh, control. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I think I have some undiagnosed issues around control that I'm working through. And ironically, my career change later in my life to become a software engineer is very much related to needs for control. Like, that's what appeals to me about this job. I have literal control over everything that goes on in this world when I'm you know, coding a web app. Um, everything is very predictable. If I don't know something, that thing becomes easily learnable through a few Google searches uh, combined with the previous knowledge I've built up. It's all very comforting <laughs> in, in an unfortunate way. Unfortunately, just because you, you don't always want that comfort, I think, because you always want to be pushing yourself to learn more and, um, and grow that way. But when you're stuck in a place where everything feels safe, uh, I don't know how much growth you're doing. But as a whole other uh, topic for another time, the motivation to roll my own auth was really to be in control of more of the graph. If you think about like the, the architectural graph that I'd be building inside this project, I wanted control over the auth pieces as well. And this is because... Um, just in other projects I've worked on, whenever you go into auth, you end up giving up the reins of your project to some other service or you know another microservice in your company that's handling auth or you know sending things over to auth zero. It's really breaking this idea of a closed system where with a closed system, I feel like I'm very much in control over everything. And so as I bring in someone else's auth solution, uh, that goes out the window. And it also brings with it like all kinds of troubling stuff for the developer experience. Like you inevitably have to build in a back door to end to end tests for signing people in or, you know, some some weird hack around there or something that doesn't really make sense. So it's like a whole thing. Right. So I decided to roll my own off thinking, you know, how hard could it be? I think I understand most of the things that have to happen. Like you got to store people's passwords, but they got to be salted so that you're not actually storing their plain text password, but you can still match someone being logged in. And then you got to make a token when someone does log in so that you have a token per session and you can invalidate that token uh, after some time passes. And that token can then be used, uh, passed in a header to any requests. And we'll, you can kind of like, we can handle that, right? So that's what I did. I built a microservice to do just that. I actually have things set up inside of my system where there is a separate auth service. I think I called it like local toast ID. That's the name of the company I had made with some friends back in the day and just seemed like a fun thing to do uh, to name it that. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to a podcast called uh, Butterscotch Shenanigans, where I think they they built their own sort of ID system and they kind of named it after something there. And, you know, it seemed like a fun idea <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is actually its own uh, super base setup uh, completely detached from the rest of my application. Uh, my other, my my application for the MMO game, uh, that actually has its own super base instance too that manages like the world state and stuff like that. So these two things are completely detached from each other. You know, I built a JS client for talking with the auth, uh, the auth service that I rolled myself. You know, we made things work. Yeah, it was great. But 
Uh, it took, you know, several days. I, I'm a side product, so I'm not working on it every day. Maybe like pulling it up maybe once a week, a couple times a month kind of deal and getting something done on it. But what it ended up doing to me was I ended up spending a lot of time on the user ID piece or the just the auth piece that could have been spent on time for the core functionality of you know my MMO game. So yeah, that was a that was just a huge time sink uh, in terms of what I was putting my time into. And uh, by the way, like I'm still missing a lot of features. This really needs to be like properly ready. There's no way to recover an account if you forgot your password. There's no like OAuth provider support for if you want to sign in with Google or anything like that. I allow for severely insecure passwords. <laughs> and I, I guess that's fine. There's, there's just a lot of holes still in what I was able to put together for my auth service. And that's, that's after having sunk a lot of time into it. The benefits of this though is like I said, I have a completely working end-to-end -end test suite that's going to go up and, you know, spin up my auth server with complete with the, the database locally and the, then spin up the world server, uh, database two locally, start those things running. And I have a completely self-contained end-to-end test that came in. That part of it was actually great. But here's the kicker. And this is the kind of the cool thing I think about Supabase. Uh, and this is, this is really one of the biggest things that sold me on really getting behind Supabase in terms of what kinds of videos I wanted to make. If you look at what Supabase gives you via the CLI, it's really a way of taking all the Supabase images the same one they use on their cloud service, the same ones you'd use if you were to uh, self-host your own Supabase instance. Uh, this, the Supabase CLI is going to take all those images for you, uh, arrange them together for you in local development. So all you have to really do is run Supabase start and your instance is going to come up using the same images it would, including all of their auth functionality which um, actually makes the idea of having a closed system still completely viable, which, um, you know, when I first started the project, I was very new to Supabase. I didn't really know or expect that to be the case, like working with Auth0 or even like Firebase before. Like Firebase has uh, emulators you can use, I believe, that work with Auth, but it's still very, it's, you're not really running the app. You're, you're running through emulators there. And so it's still, you know, in my opinion, not really a closed system. But in any case, by migrating over to Supabase Auth, you're, you're still really able to keep that closed system in place. And also, by the way, those images that we talked about, those are completely open source. So I'm essentially viewing them as a black box, but if there was something where I needed to take more of that control over what's going on in the auth functionality for my project, I could actually go in and tinker with what's going on with that source code, including, you know, make a PR to get something into, uh, you know, super base functionality, or maybe even, you know, fork it or make my own plugin on top of it somehow uh, to, to make things work if I, if I needed to do that. Um, which seems like a lot of work, but I think it's significantly less work than trying to roll your own. So maybe in summary, Ant, thanks for calling me out. If you were calling me out specifically, apologies. But um, yeah, I think I think point is well made uh, in support of Supabase Auth in this use case. I think for most use cases. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. If you think there's ever a valid use case for rolling your own auth. Uh, B-Man, a very good friend of mine, was mentioning this on Twitter, some very valid use cases for uh, rolling your own auth where, you know, I think he works in Web3 kind of stuff and authentication, I believe, is a little bit different there. I haven't really messed with it that much myself. But I, I could see how, uh, for certain use cases, a, some, especially stuff on a newer frontier, uh, there may not be something that you can just pull off the shelf. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you wanna see me get my just desserts, I am planning a live stream for Friday this week. So this will be tomorrow by the time this gets released. Uh, Silent Works, AKA Super Drew, AKA Andrew Smith will be joining us. He's one of the DevRel engineers over at Superbase. Uh, we're going to live stream together and we're going to rip out my own self-rolled auth functionality and we're going to replace it with super bases. It's going to be great, I think. <laughs> so yeah, come check it out and uh, we'll see you next time. This is Zach from Supership. Catch y'all next time.